Hello everyone, welcome to a new video here of European Elite. Today we have three special guests who are going to pick the men's team of the decade from 2010 to 19 and they are alongside me and I'm delighted to say we have Vital Einen, coach of the Polish national team and Perugia as well. Of course he's been with Belgium and Germany in the past. He's joining us from Belgium. Andrea Zorzi is in Italy, legend of course of that Italian national team winning so many titles back in the 80s and 90s and now commentator for the Zone and columnist for Gazzetto dello Sport and former coach of the French national team, Philippe Blatt. He's in France for us today. Also, of course, with Scrab Bouhatov in the past and a number of other teams as well. Gentlemen, great to see you. I hope you're all OK. Let's get straight on with this team. So much to discuss over the next half an hour or so. First, we're going to pick the setter. This happened with the women's team in our previous video. The guys decided that the setter was the perfect person to pick first for the team. So, Philippe, I'm going to come to you first. Who would you like to put forward as your setter in this team of the decade? It's, uh, for me, there is two sprout setters that I want to impress. It's Tonuti, French guy, and Gianelli, the Italian, uh, the Italian players. But it's always difficult to choose a setter because he's so connected to the style of the team where they are playing that it's always difficult to find the right setter. But in these two, perhaps I, I would push these two nine. What, what is it about Tonuti and Ginelli? Who, what, why, why have they been so amazing? Uh, Tonuti, I think that he's developed a, a kind of volleyball that's uh, very interesting because <coughs> his team has not uh, so great physical potentials, but by uh, changing the times, his choice, trying to find always the best uh, moment to use quick or side everything, it makes a, a great opportunity for this team to have a good side out. Uh, as well, if you have also in some great period that he can uh, use at the right moment, but uh, uh, there was a kind of player very, very interesting for me. And generally, because it's a new style of volleyballs, uh, it's a uh, high guy starting uh, uh, high level uh, last moment. He's trying to uh, change his way to play, trying to play faster and faster. It's true that this team is not uh, right now the best uh, performance in reception, so it's not so always so easy to, to keep the performance, but uh, he's a very complete player. He has a very good serve, very good, spot, uh, very good block also. Uh, so he's the youngest, the youngest uh, talented setter in the moment for me. Okay. Vital, over to you. Do you agree with his selections? Who would you like to select as your best setter of the decade? I think the, de the debate can start because, of course, I see it totally different. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting because I have to explain my general view. I was looking to this question, like making the team of the decade. I was looking which players were winning. Because looking to qualities, yes, it's a nice discussion. Tonyut is a great setter, Gianelli is a good one. But then I was thinking, who of the guys was winning something in the last 10 years? Was making his teams win, but on every position. Yeah. And then I came, I came to two guys at the end who stand out for me. Maybe three. These are the two Russian setters because it's very easy. The Russians were dominating with the national team in the first part, like 2012, 2013. Yeah, the Russians were running again in 2000, what was it, 19? Yeah, in between, Kazan was dominating, so the Russians are very high. So Butka, Granke, and I always found a great combination. And I have to defend my own players, Fabian Giska was winning two times the World Championship. So I was writing down, just, I was at the end even, because first I was writing Butko, but this morning, I was doubting who was playing the gold medal match in 2012. And then I saw it was Rankin playing the gold medal match in 2012. So then I took Budka out and I put Jiska forward. And so at the end, I came to Jiska just for winning. But it's not so much on the pure technical quality, but much more which player was making his team win. So I came to my own player, Fabian Jiska. Okay. <laughs> so a split opinion so far. So Andrea, we're going to come to you and you're going to have to... <laughs> Andrea, we kill you. And now me, Philippe and me will be busy like, come on, Andrea, which side you do? So take care of what you say. <laughs> Before the meeting, I asked to be the last one because I'm not so expert like a video. But now I have to decide, guys. X factor or something like that. So <laughs> my on my shoulder responsibility. Oh, I uh, appreciate uh, what Bidley said. I think that uh, checking uh, who wins something is very important uh, because uh, all the players in the short list are wonderful player. Um, 
I, I, I'm very happy that uh, Simone Giannelli is still young, he grew up very fast, uh, is part of this group. Um, I have a big respect for Butko, uh, but I think that also in the final of the Olympic Games in London, he was not in the court. Uh, my choice is about, uh, is, uh, is on Benjamin Tonyuti, because he won enough. And then I ask uh, um, the opinion of Andrea Gardini, a very close friend. He was the coach of Tonyuti in uh, Zaxa, Poland. And he told me that he's a wonderful, a wonderful guy, not just as a player, but he's uh, incredible. The possibility that Tonyuti has to improve the performance of uh, his team. Uh, obviously, I'm pretty big. I was a, a physical player and I appreciate a lot uh, the volleyball player that are not relying just on their body. And so, uh, Jurga, sorry for the pronunciation, is uh, almost impossible for me to pronounce in the right way the Polish name. He's a great player, also for Grand King, but I think that Benjamin Trinity, in my personal opinion, is uh, the setter of this uh, player on the last decade. Okay, I lose. Okay, I lose. Wait, wait till I meet you again, Natalie. Andrea. <laughs> okay, so can we, can we all agree that? Uh, uh, I, I hope I hope that no, it's, it's, it's not completely contrary to my opinion. No, no it's a great it's a great setter. There's no discussion about that. Uh, Benjamin is great. The problem of the setter, you know, it's always that uh, we have to think about him like uh, uh, his own skill, uh, but we have also to think about which player is around. And there is an important point that you underline. It's uh, also is teammate, his mental, mentality is very important because uh, uh, this is a guy who all the ball comes through. So be a great team teammate, be a great uh, also uh, uh, stress um, uh, management is it's very important. But I agree with Vital also that we have to take in consideration who win. But in the case of setter, <laughs> Sometimes some of the great, great setter cannot win because if around we don't have the team, <laughs> no way to win. Okay. May, may I add something? And being the setter of the French team, it's uh, almost interesting because the personality of the French player are pretty good. So being the coach, being the, uh, being the setter is really tough. And I think that Benjamin did a great job. Yeah. Great. So we yes. agree. We have, we have our first player in the team of the decade, Benjamin okay. Benuti. The uh, France setter is in our team. Let's go next and put some height and some steel on the court of the net. Let's pick our two middle blockers in this team. In the shortlist here, we have Marco Podraschanin, Kevin Lehu, Alexander Volkov, Viktor Yosifov, Dmitry Mazursky of Russia, Artem Volvik of Russia as well, Piotr Novakovsky and Streko Lisinats of Serbia. So eight to pick from. Let's go to Vitil Einan first to pick his first middle blocker in this team. I mean, I think the first middle blocker was very easy for me. Yeah, I think Muzerski was dominating the middle block scene for like five, six years. He was really far. He was one of the few middle blockers who could win a match by making 20 points and so. And even, of course, we can remember that he one time go to the opposite and make the difference in the Olympic final. So there. And the next thing is technical level. I remember I saw Mozeski for the first time live from the Memorial Wagner 2012. And I was so impressed from his moving in the block. He's the first really tall guy who is decently moving in the block. Nice steps, nice moves, well controlled. So in a lot of ways, I found him, yeah, above everything. Mozeski was absolutely my first choice. Okay. Can we agree on Mozeski, Andrea? Oh, sure. Mozeski has to be the first choice. I, I met uh, live him in uh, La Plata, a final world league in, uh, I don't remember exactly the year. And I was really impressed because in my generation, two meters and five was the highest tall to be uh, enough dynamic. And uh, Muzerski with his uh, two meters and 18 is moving very, very good and very smoothly. And then you cannot um, forget that uh, a gold medal final in London was born uh, relying on uh, a middle blocker playing uh, like an opposite. So I totally agree with Vitaly. Muzerski is the first choice uh, in the middle blocker role. 
Uh, that was the first time that I met Mazursky. I met him in the mix zone beneath the, the stand behind the one end of the court. And I was so overwhelmed as a journalist, this guy standing in front of me. You know, I'm not the smallest, I'm not the biggest, but he's absolutely huge. So, you know, I imagine, Philippe, when your players are coming up against him at the net, it must be quite, um, not scary, but quite an imposing figure. Oh, you have to, you have to find one times in the, in the lift with four or five <laughs> Russian guys. <laughs> You understand that I'm a player that was pretty high. Now I understand that I, I am pretty small. <laughs> well, for Mazerski, for you, should be in the team? Yeah, because, you know, for middle blocker, often you have to, sometimes you have to choose with uh, offense middle blocker and very good bl blocker for in these positions. But for Mazerski, they combine both because uh, obviously he's, he's all very efficient in offense, but also uh, very impressive in block. So, and if you want to have his best serve, so yes, Muzerski obviously is, uh, is the first choice. Okay, great. So Muzerski is in a team as our first middle blocker. We'll say with you, Philippe, who should be the second middle blocker in your team of the decade? That's very complicated. <laughs> obviously, that's very complicated. But you know, there is one point that's for me, middle blocker for most of the time, uh, it's the guy who should, uh, understand very well the games because they have, you have to don't forget that you have to take decisions about block and block defense. So uh, most of these players there is on the list are more offense spiker than really blocker. So in this list, except Muzerski, the most smart middle blocker perhaps is, is Stankovic in my way. But it's true that it's difficult to put out from uh, some players that, uh, like uh, Volvic or, or Novakovsky uh, or Lizinac. We are really great in this, uh, in this position. So, uh, but I want to make a, a small, I'm sure that my colleague would be not happy, would not agree with me, but <laughs> I will put something on Stankovic. <laughs> okay. Thank you to call me colleague. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, there's so many amazing players, of course, that could be in this list. Stankovic was on our, uh, not reserve list, but a list of players that could easily have been in this list, along with Marcus Baum. You know, how good was Stankovic, Andrea? We should come to you for this, um, having played so long in Italy. You know, what kind of a player was he? And should he be your middle blocker as well or somebody else? I, I agree with uh, Philippe. Uh, uh, he's very smart. He's very smart, especially in uh, attacking. Uh, going back to my uh, choice, I would choose uh, Piotr Novakovsky uh, because I really a lot on the, the victory. So he's a uh, twice world championship in both uh, the world championship, play a wonderful uh, uh, championship. Uh, obviously, Podrashenin is, uh, I think, one of the best middle blocker I ever met in my life. Uh, and also for Lizinak and the other one. but. Uh, in this chance, I think that uh, two gold medal in a row with the Poland team, and Poland was not a favorite team, is too much not to choice Piotr Nowakowski as the second middle blocker of the decade. Okay. I agree. Nowakowski <laughs> and Vital? Yeah, of course, I, I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> Piotr, Nowak, Piotr is my friend. I have a really good relationship. He will kill me if I say no, if I say no to this. Eh? But I, I also had him as my second middle blocker. And I will explain. I agree with Philippe a lot. You need a middle blocker. And Piotr is also in this category. And I, I have a small story. When I started two years ago in the National Forum, I asked some people, who is the smartest player of the national team? And everybody was always agreeing, the smartest guy is Piotr Nowakowski. He's very introvert. He's not talking too much. But I agree with that. He's the most intelligent guy. And you see this also in the way he's playing. So I think this, the, the concept from Philippe, I agree. The, I put another name and I hope, yeah, I have to, of no, it's not have to. I like to agree with that and put Piotr there on that team. We agree. Okay. Everyone is agree at the end for Piotr. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to agree. Piotr Novakovsky and Dimitri uh, Mizzou. No, so what is great to be this choice because with, with this choice, you have two great different kind of serve in middle blocker. Because Piotr has a very great float serve. It should be very aggressive. So we have a great jump and a great float serve. So our team is equally good. Okay. 
So good variety. So we've got Benjamin Tonuti, Piotr Novakovsky and Dmitry Mizerski in our team so far. Next, let's go to the libero, the player who is going to be in and out of our team all the time. Four great names on our shortlist here. Yenya Grebenikov, Massimo Kolacci, Alexei Verbov and Pavel Zatorsky. Uh, Andrea, we'll come to you first on this one. Um, who do you think should be the libero in our team? Oh, I really love Eugenia Grebenikov. I, I like him uh, in the court. I like him attitude. I think he's a, a kind of new liberal. He's doing something new in, in the world of uh, this role. And um, I think that uh, my choice, I like a lot also Pavel Zatorsky and uh, obviously Kolachi. All the four liberal are pretty good, are outstanding. But I pick Jania Grabenico because uh, he's uh, smiling, he's uh, interesting, he's playing in a complicated team and uh, he do a lot uh, just uh, even, even in the tough moment. And uh, I met him uh, a couple of times uh, during an interview and his smile is uh, very, very important. So technically and uh, personally, I like a lot Jania Grabenico and uh, Congratulations for his baby a couple of days ago, I think. So, Xenia, you are my libero of the decade. Congratulations from all of us. Uh, Vital, would you like to say Grebenikov as well or a different name? Mm, I, I was talking all the time between... Okay, great. Verbo was great also, but then you have Pavel Zatowski, who was winning two times gold, and Grebenikov. And that I find a very difficult balancing. If you go to results, of course, like nobody was winning two times gold on the World Championship. Uh, Ibrinikov was not winning so much, but I also like the way he's playing. He's very dynamic. So, if I was alone, I would put Satovsky up, but I, I will follow the choice of Andrea because it's, um, it's a pleasure to see Ibrinikov playing all this. I agree with that for years. I also like him, and I think it's, it's a very nice character, very nice way of fighting, very nice way of playing. So, I can follow Andrea with a small remark, but I can, I can follow that. Okay. And Philippe, is it three out of three? Are you going to back your countryman or somebody else? No, no, I'm saying um, it's exactly what, what uh, Andrea said about uh, Grebenico, Genia. It's uh, obviously it's the uh, best modern liberal uh, right now. Uh, I, I work with Zatoski, well, he's, he's very good technically, but uh, perhaps Genia has something more in terms of uh, energy, in terms of uh, teammates, in terms of fighting, is always a guy positive, pushing, trying to do the best, trying to move his teams. So it's, it's really a, a great libero. So right now, I have no doubts about Genia Kanebenigo. May, may I ask a short question to Vitaly and Philippe about the Grebenikov? Mm -hmm. There is uh, still uh, the possibility to grow, to improve for uh, Genia in the future years. And where? I think so, because uh, Vitaly, perhaps. Uh, uh, no, that now he's playing a lot of, he's using a lot of his incredible physical abilities. And I think that coming holders, he will, I hope, develop something more based on observation, uh, right positions, adapting some, something to, to be always more performant and performant. Uh, but right now we have so many energies that, uh, yes, it will, it will be great. And perhaps in Flot, he can, he can still have a, a best performance. Philippe, how does he compare to French liberos of the past? Well, you know, we have a chance in France, we have many very good <laughs> liberos. <laughs> uh, there was Hubereno, uh, uh, you have also... Uh, Ziga. Um, Ziga. Yeah, Ziga in the middle, now Genia Grebenikov. So we, we, have, we have Rosa, we have, we have pretty a lot of good libero because I think that uh, in the National Training Center, you have working a lot of techniques. So that produced also very good, very good libero. So, but the fight in the competition for national team was pretty hard for me. <laughs> so take the position of libero. Okay, so we now have four players in our team of the decade. Jenny Grebenikov, Benjamin Tonuti, both of France are in the team, Piotr Novakovsky and Dmitry Mazursky as Russia. Okay, uh, Andre, you're going to pick the first player next. Would you like to pick an outside hitter or an opposite? I uh, Opposite, obviously. <laughs> I feel at home. I feel at home. Uh, Mikhailov, uh, Zaitz, uh, Fatanasiewicz, Vladli, Sokolov and Grozer, and a special mention for Kurek. It's uh, wasting time saying they are great players. But I think that uh, 
there is no chance and uh, Maxim Mikhailov is uh, for sure and by far the best opposite in the last decade. Uh, I don't think I have to explain because he won uh, with the national team, he won with Denit Kazan, he played like an uh, opposite, he played like an uh, uh, outside hitter, he's a wonderful guy. Being a Russian, he smiled a lot, considering given that he's a Russian, so I have nothing to say, you cannot ask it, nothing more to a player like an opposite. Maxim Mikhailov is my pick. Okay, Maxim Mikhailov, let's go to Vital. Oh, nothing to add. I think I found it a very easy choice because Mikhailov is dominating this position together with the other guys, but now for 10 years. And you can be coincidence to win one time, but you win all the time. Uh, shows that, and he's playing. He's so stable, he's always playing. I remember the World League final in France two years ago when he was coming back after a long break. And directly, he was putting up like 50, 60% scoring all the time. So, like, he's always performing. So, yes, the guy from the last 10 years, Mikhailov. I think he has so many awards and so many medals and trophies in his trophy cabinet at home. But, you know, what can you say about the other people on this list as well to show how good he has had to be to beat them? Yeah, I think um, there, it's sometimes hard. I mean, I think I worked with Georg Kruzer in German national team. But of course, in the German national team, it's not so easy to win Olympics or other things. So it's very hard to make this result. So I think also that's an amazing opposite. I'd love to work with him. Yeah, and, and from quality close. But I think Mikhailov was also choosing the right teams and the right nationality. Eh? I think that are part of it. So I, I think that I worked with Kurek, who well, they made an amazing world championship, but a bit, a bit more irregular the last year. So we will see how he's doing. So I, I always like, yes, every opposite was interesting. But there's only one stable factor always coming back, and that's Mikhailov. Is there any part of his game that could be improved? I have to be honest, Mikhailov, I was never studying so close. So that I cannot, mm, I cannot say. Like from a lot of guys, like Mikhailov was playing in Russia, I was coaching this year in Italy. So he's far away. Only the national team will meet him sometimes. Uh, so I, I don't think he's really like an amazing bombing spiker, but he's smart. Very smart in coaching. And Philippe, is it an easy choice for you as well? Yeah, I think uh, this is important. Uh, what uh, Vital said that uh, he's a regular player. Where he perform is really efficient all the time. All the competition is always uh, be part of the performance of the team. So this is great because it's true that some of the of the name they are great performance in one competition. So where they make something uh, incredible. Uh, it's true that uh, wrestling. Last not the last, uh, in 2014 in the, the World Championship, he makes something incredible. But uh, it was one great competition. But you can make also Rousier winning alone the European Championship uh, with the friends. But in terms of regularity for this period, Mihailov uh, perhaps is the best. So I'm agree. Okay. So there we have it. We have another player in our team of the decade. Maxim Mikhailov joins Dmitry Mazursky, his fellow country, and Piotr Novakovsky of Poland, and the two Frenchmen, Benjamin Tonuti and Genia Grebenikov. Right, we're on to the last category now. Just two more players to pick in our team of the decade, and they're both outside hitters. The shortlist, Wilfredo Leon, Ervin Ngapets, Uros Kovacevic, Michal Kubiak, Osmani Kwantarena, Nemanja Petric, Sergei Tetsukin, and Matej Kazieski of Bulgaria. Right, who wants to pick first? Who's smiling the most in the room? Let's go to Philippe. I think the first one where you, everyone will be agree will be with Fred Leon. We cannot put first choice like swing hitters. These guys, it's, it's obvious, I think. And what has made him such an amazing player? You know, still only 26, um, but, you know, such an immense, immense hitter. I agree, obviously, I agree. You cannot put with Fred Leon in this uh, wonderful team. Is a uh, technically, physically, emotionally a uh, great player, and uh, with Denis Kazan, he has not the opportunity to play a lot with the national team. It's not his fault, obviously. He was available as soon as possible. So Vilfredo, I think, is a, a great player. He's a, a good person, and uh, obviously, is the first choice uh, in the outside hitter role. Yeah, I mean, four Champions League titles in Russia and now a member of your national team as well, Vital. What kind of a player is he to work with on a daily basis? He's obliged to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you an honest story. I mean, halfway this season this year, I made the figures of the season, like all statistics together. 
And then I saw the numbers of Wilfredo, and they are so far above other players I ever worked with. I worked now like 15 years as a coach, and I never had a player who makes so excellent figures. So I told Wilfredo also, sorry, it's not only the how you look or how hard you hit, but just the figures are really, you have the best player in the world. Yeah, there's on this moment no discussion for me on the outside, this is the best. And if you look to the last five years, he was winning. And then if you ask me how he is, he's a very nice, he's a nice and polite guy and very easy to work with. So um, I really, I really love to work with him. I was even talking with him yesterday again about some things. And so, so he's always, he's open to learn. It's not only the, the player of the decade. I think if we, if we can do this in 10 years, we will put him again in that team. I think. Yeah, only 26 years old at the moment, has so many good years ahead of him. Uh, let's stay with you, Vital. Do you want to pick your second hitter? Well, that, that I found maybe one of the most difficult. Mm, because like, I have guys like Mika Kubiak is my captain of my team and two times world champion and great fighter. And I would love to put in the team, but I don't do it. <laughs> I hope he's not mad on me for that. <laughs> um, I think the beginning, uh, Philip was making a very correct command. A guy like Tit Yukin, it's a guy who maybe should be in the list. He's not dominating for 10 years. He's dominating for 20 years. He was in this, in this competition. I think I was thinking which year, first time I met him. It's very long ago. So he should be there. But also, I think Juan Terena, Osmani, um, it's also somebody who was, I checked, he was with Trento winning the Champions League in 2011. And then he's winning the Champions League with Civitanova in 2019. And in between, he was always performing. Yeah, he's also a guy where I say, wow, this is a guy over 10 years. I have to be, I don't like to tell it, but we lost this year in 2020, the cup final in Italy, because Osmani played amazing. Yeah, so I think if you go over the 10 years, then the choice is Osmani from Trainer. Okay, let's go to Philippe. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is, I think, the most difficult choice, the second swing hitter, because uh, in this list, you have many players with, we have for our teams some key guys. Uh, if you are uh, Euros, uh, Kubiak, and Gape, this is players we make something different for the teams. So this is important players. Uh, uh, Rontorena, as uh, Vital said, is uh, very stable players, performance all the time, playing good. Uh, this is difficult to don't put him on the list. But in the same time, I have this remember of the Tetrukin, like uh, did I say, he made so great things for his teams, uh, like captain, like leader, like uh, individual performance as well. That's as well, I don't know how to put Tetrukin in this list. So uh, I will push to say, sorry Osmani, but I want to give a special award to Tetrukin because really uh, it's, monster of our sports and uh, I want to put him in the, the list. Okay, T Tetsukin, you know, one of the only players on this whole list of all the players in the positions that has actually retired, um, you know, 44 now, so many times he played for, for Russia, about 500 times he played for his national team, you know, won three Champions Leagues in the previous decade, uh, won one Champions League in 2014, this decade just gone. What made him such a special player in that position? Because I think that he combined two important things, three perhaps. Uh, one is his skill was very good in all the positions. Uh, he had a great mentality, he's a teammate. It's always leader of his team because when the Russian teams uh, need to be shake, he, he, takes, a, he takes a job. Uh, and uh, in the same times when you meet Tetukin and you speak with him, it's not someone put him in front. It's always very... Uh, soft in these discussions, he's always a, a, a teammate, so this is a reason why, you know, you need a team like, uh, always in the team, I think that you need a player like this, we are uh, able to push his team, but also sometimes to make this team more quiet, more secure, and this is exactly the kind of, of player that you can, is able to make this, uh, this two, uh, two things. Okay. So vote for Tetsukin. Andrea, who, who are you picking from that list? Any love for the likes of uh, Kovacevic, of course, who's played in your country for so many years? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, Uros is a great player. He's a left hand. He's very special to see. 
in this kind of player. I start from a reverse angle. I exclude Tate Kukin because he's too good. He's another category. He's uh, good for the, the, the team of the two decks at least. So he's a wonderful, probably the best player in the long span of the history. Uh, but I cannot uh, choose him for this decade. Uh, I like a lot Irving Gapet. Uh, I like him, he's a wonderful guy, very strange, conflictual. Sometimes he makes something even more complicated than they are. Uh, like he you know, closed uh, the gold medal in the European going there and jumping with the back. Uh, we call that Veronica uh, against Slovenia, so it's, it's wonderful. And also Osmani Wontorena is obviously a great player. Uh, but the problem with, with Osmani is that uh, also, Leon is a Cuban, and so to being balanced, my, my pick is uh, with Michael Kubiak. Uh, I told you before, I have a, a, good, a good feeling, I'm very really interested when the, a good player is not relying just on physical skill. Kubiak is wonderful for his resilience, uh, is uh, a great jumper. Uh, I think that uh, what I like a lot of Kubiak is that in the best moment, He's doing his best plays, and I think it's easy to recognize how he can impact the atmosphere of his team. That's why I pick Mark Nikol Kubik to play with Wilfredo Leon. Okay, so... <laughs> but that, that, that's my pick, but he makes a mistake. I play with Kubiak and Leon and that's near form always. <laughs> Andre, I cannot choose that. It's my choice. <laughs> As a journalist, we're building, we're building a good, good team we're building. <laughs> Well, I'm going to sit back here. We've got three choices from three different uh, great people from the volleyball world. You can decide between you who is going to be the second hitter. How we manage this uh, balance? Well, I mean, I mean who wins Andrea, the fights between Blazosi and Einan? Andrea put me in a difficult position. I told before, of course, Michael is my captain and it's really important for the team. Yes. Yeah, but I don't will always put forward the, the Polish guys too much. And I mean, I think like, hmm, yeah, I, Osmani was also for 10 years winning. So they I, a bit in between. But of course, if you put forward Mikhail Kubiak, <laughs> I will support it very strongly. I think Evan and Gepet is also a very nice choice. But it should be, no, I don't want to wrong, wrong, but with too many French people in the whole team. Because you also have to recognize who was winning. And that were Russians, for example, a lot. And some Polish were winning. And maybe some Italian. So till now we didn't have one Italian. So there was like Osmani to have a balance. But I mean, I have to be honest. I give my opinion. I give it to Philippe, and Philippe can decide. He's the. I, I think he's yeah, Philippe is older than me. So Philippe, you get that. You get a decision often. Okay? Uh, thank you very much for this. <laughs> <laughs> for so that we can blame you afterwards. A, in French, you say the old potatoes. You know, you said the old potatoes. <laughs> Come on, you have to. But I, I come back to Andrea. Why do you say that Tetukin is more a player from the last, not from this decade and from the last one? Because he's, he's a, over a top category. So he's for sure the best of the last decade and also this one. And yeah. uh, this is the short list for Tetukin. Okay. And so in these 10 years, uh, also the other player could be compared, could be at the same level. Tetukin is over if you consider the entire career. Mm -hmm. But we are doing in the last year, Tikiukin is not. Uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> so that, that's why I not choose Tikiukin. I consider him the best uh, outside hitter in the l recent history. But we are choosing the player for the last decade. That's why. Okay, I understand. <clears throat> so, uh, what I can do now? So, our show is between Kudek and Rotorena, right? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, what I'm sure that each, each of them you choose is a great, uh, is a great uh, receiver and a great player. So, um, I don't know, it's very difficult to, to choose. So, uh, two of you, you have a uh, balancing for Rontorena. It's difficult. Huh? In this moment, it's true that uh, Rontorena is, uh, is winning less with national teams and winning more with, with club. 
Yeah. Right now, because also because Kubiak is playing in Japan, he's winning also in Japan, but this is a different is a different championship. But yeah, well, uh, just to say, Juan Terena, you know, three times he was Champions League MVP in this decade, so yeah, you know those kind of awards so, speak for themselves. It's wonderful. It's unbelievable how everybody knows where Osmani will attack and he killed the ball always. So it's unbelievable. He's good in the first line, back row, serving. So it's a wonderful player, obviously. Exactly, obviously. So perhaps, sorry to, uh, for Kubi, but uh, perhaps uh, I think that uh, right now between these two, the, the best in this moment should be Juan Torreira. Okay. Osmani, Juan Torreira. Uh, completes the team. If we're all agreed on that, is that okay? Yes. Yes, okay. I, I, we accept. We accept. Okay. Cool. So, we're <laughs> friend of Leon. Thank you, Thank you, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I give you one more time. The so potatoes now is, is cold. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, to complete the team, we're friend of Leon, Osmanik Wantarena, Maxim Mikhailov, Dmitry Mazursky, Piotr Novakovsky, Benjamin Tonuti, and Genia Grabenikov. Guys, what a great team we have. Vital, but, let's ask you this question. Who would you like the captain to be? No, but I, I mean, and I, I miss one other thing. I mean, if you make a team, you need a coach. Okay. And, and there was, I was not, nothing till now choosing about the coach of the last 10 years. So I was also thinking, like, when I was walking this morning, who is the coach of the last 10 years? So there I was also thinking about, maybe it's for directly, you ask me about the captain now. Hmm, I think that's, um, I, I, I'm very easy, yeah? I have the principal, general principle that to take the setter as the captain. And we took a setter who is famous for being a very good captain. Yeah, so I think it's a, that's the easy choice. It has to be Benjamin Tonuti to, to lead that team. Philippe, would that be a good selection? I am, I am exactly opposite with Vital. <laughs> I would like to give the... <laughs> Why? Because I would just explain. Because setter has already a great leadership to do with the teams. He has to focus on, on many things. And I think it's not the time for him to go to discuss with the referee or to make the draw or that. So it's true that he's a great leader, but I try when I can to don't give <laughs> captain to the, to the setter. But this is a coach choice. So, but any, obviously, Tonyoti has the abilities to be a great captain. Uh, but we have perhaps also, we choose one player also in this team. He has used to be a captain. Uh, he has perhaps the experience to be because he's captain for a long time in the national team and uh, club and everything. He's run to Renan. So, should be uh, the, the, the other choice. So, for me, both is uh, it's okay, but uh, Andrea, you have to choose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that Benjamin Tunuti speaks a different language. Uh, he's more tranquil than the other one. Uh, he's, uh, it was a uh, uh, captain, so I think the Benjamin Tunuti, even if he is a setter, so his mind is uh, focused in many things, he could be a good setter, the best setter, and also a good captain. Oh, so you know, me, if, not, if not, you can go in the, in, the, in the way of the history, because now I know that someone is making the request that Libero should be also the captain of the teams, because there is no reason that Libero should be not, because you cannot say that the Libero is not always in the court, because Mitterrand is not always on the court, so... But, this should be funny to make a uh, Benigo, but it's, it's just a joke. Okay. And one final question before we finish. You know, we've got so many amazing players in this team. Do you think it would take long for them to start playing well together? Or do good players just get on the same level as their other players? I'm the, last, uh, I'm the last to answer because I have no personal experience in how much time needs to put together a good team. But yes, no, I, I don't know. No, I think that these teams should be, but I mean, obviously this is great champions. So great champions uh, is more easy to, to make all together with, with these players. But uh, with the team we prepare, I think that uh, every, all of these players are, are teammates and uh, the team will work. Without any doubts. Perfect. Great way to finish. Andrea, Philippe, Vital, thanks very much for your time today. Hopefully, uh, we're back on the volleyball court soon and we'll see you all around Europe at various games. Uh, but for now, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye from Milano. Bye. Ciao a tutti. Ciao. Ciao a casa. <laughs> <laughs>